To set a Photoshop template up for an 11 by 17 poster that is not going to be full bleed is really easy. So go to the File menu and choose New. Your settings need to be changed to 11 inches by 17 inches, 300 pixels per inch, CMYK color, 8-bit, and I suggest making your background contents white and then click OK. So this is the actual paper size. Um, when you print something that's not full bleed, you can submit just a file like this that's filled from side to side and then tell them that it is not meant to be full bleed, that it won't be trimming. So they can just fit it to the media. Which means when it gets printed, everything will be just a fraction of an inch smaller than it uh, was when you designed it. But for a poster, that really shouldn't matter. So when you get your final print product, it'll have an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch of white all the way around the edges. Um, what you do want to know, though, is that there's kind of a safe area you need to be aware of. So I would say on a poster like this, don't put any text any closer than a quarter of an inch to the edge. So let's put some guidelines a quarter of an inch in so we know where to look. Um, to do that, let's make sure your rulers are set to inches first by right clicking on one of them and choosing inches. It will change both of them at the same time. You'll notice that the zero lines up with the top left corner of my document, which is fairly normal. And here's my measurement. So there's one inch, a half inch, and a quarter inch. Now moving guidelines out is really easy. All you do is click on a ruler and drag and it will create a guideline which you can let go at the mark that you've decided on. So at a quarter inch. This can be made a little bit easier if you go to view and choose make sure that the uh, snap feature is turned on, that there's a check mark by it. That will mean that those guidelines will want to snap to the nearest inch measurement anyway. And then do that to all four sides of your document. So pulling that in a quarter inch, clicking and dragging one out to a quarter inch in front of the 11. Now if you accidentally let go of a guideline in the wrong spot, it's very easy to fix. Just grab your move tool, hover over it, and then click and drag and you can move it to where it needs to be. a quarter inch. Okay. And that would be my file setup. And then on top of that I could make any of my um, graphics that I was going to print. Now remember when you grab colors there are lots of colors on here that actually won't be able to print in four color. For example these ones in the top corner. And you can tell it won't be able to print because a couple things will happen. You'll get a little box over here by your color that has a warning sign in it. That means that this color won't print and if you choose it, it will actually print more like this. And this is the closest it can get to that color. So a quick way to jump to the closest version of that color is to just click once on that box and it will move it over there. If you want to remove the temptation to pick those super bright colors, hit Command Shift Y and it will add gray over top of them out here. That actually hides what are called the out of gamut colors. Out of gamut are the inks, uh, are the colors that you cannot produce on a traditional four color or three color printer without ordering special ink colors. Now those really, really bright colors, if you do have a project that needs them, what you need to do is get online and take a look at the Pantone color system. That is a numbered system that professional printers use to make sure they get the right color. So you could pick a color off of that and give your printer a specific color number and say, this is what I want it to be. Now in our scenario, we've picked a color and click OK. And then I could create new layers and add color and text. My text should never go outside of this quarter inch line on this big poster. So make sure your text and anything important stays inside of that line. As far as posters, font sizes go, there are a lot of sites that kind of offer different opinions. Um, let's take a look at some that are pretty easy. The thing about a poster is it's usually something that people read really quickly. So you want to make whatever your event name or you know whatever you want to be the most eye-catching needs to be big and 
easy, easy to read. And then the next thing that needs to be really easy to read is when it is. So the date Let's see. And I'm just eyeballing these. I haven't even actually looked at, um, I haven't looked at my font sizes yet to see how those are. Now, if I want to see exactly about how big this is without having to print it out, I can grab my zoom tool, which is Z, and right click on the screen and choose print size, which will get it a little bit closer to real life size. Now, on my screen, I have a really high resolution screen and it doesn't actually work out as quite equal to an inch. You can see what the difference is between your screen and reality by grabbing a ruler and once you've set it to show print size, holding it up to the ruler and see what the difference is. And that'll kind of give you an idea. And you can even zoom in and out until you find exactly where print size is on your screen. And I would suggest writing it down on a sticky note somewhere and writing it. So for me, this size zoomed into about 33% is a lot closer to real print size. So this is actually really good font size. I can read that really well. And then if I were going to create information um, about it to maybe leave kind of a blurb, probably something that is in the 24 range would be good. So let me just set my font up here to be about 24. And then I can set in filler copy for now until I get the copy that I really want by clicking and dragging to create a type, um, a paragraph type box, and then going to the type menu and choosing paste lorem ipsum, which will paste uh, just a bunch of kind of gobbledygook. Now mine is really condensed and has some funky settings on it. Um, I can come over to my characters panel, which is if it's not open, you can go get it from your window or even just get your type tool because a lot of those will be up at the top. And then I can change my um, my leading over here. That's the, tw the size between lines. If I set it to auto, this is going to look a lot better. I can change how the alignment of the text is by going to my paragraph panel or looking up here in the control panel and choosing something that works for me um, and for the design that I'm actually working on. So I could choose a bunch of different things. The biggest thing is you want it to be readable. Not only do you want it to be readable, you want it to be a fairly short statement and um, I wouldn't do anything longer than maybe even about 30 words, honestly. And then I would put a big graphic that was very eye-catching um, and maybe even a QR code. If you've never made a QR code, there are quite a few websites out there that you can do that on. If you just go to Google and search for um, make QR code, you will get a lot of um, a lot of hits. So there are QR code generators that will spit something out. You can put in a um, let's see, this one gives you all sorts of options. I haven't really found one that I use a lot or like. I've used a couple different ones. Most of them, what they'll let you do is put in either a sentence that will show up, you know, kind of a sentence to a short paragraph. Um, that will show up or you can do something like this which is more common and put a website. So if I put the website of my um, teaching site which is rsmith. no not dot rsmith photoshop at we <laughs> if I could remember dot weebly dot com there we go and then it will create me a QR code. Now this site looks like it's asking for a lot of information, which I'm not a get, going to get into, but essentially you'll get a, a design that's like this that will spit out and you can copy it to your Photoshop file and place it. QR codes are very, very popular and very efficient ways of getting more information. In fact, on your event poster, it's a good idea to have a for more information spot. So for, um, or not even that, maybe even just a website that they can go to and see more details about whatever it is that you're talking about. So there it is. That's it pretty much in a wrap once you've got it all wrapped up and designed the way you want to. 
Um, this is where you would call whoever you're printing through and um, ask what file format they need because some printers use different formats. A really common one though that I'll show you is a PDF. So if I go to, sorry I used a short key, I'll go to the menus here, file, save as, and then under format choose Photoshop PDF wherever you're going to save it to and give it a name. Um, if this is for my class there's a name on the website that you would name it. And I would uncheck layers because layers always makes the file bigger and I know I talked to one printer who does not want any file bigger than 50 megabytes. So that's a flattened PDF. It has no layers and then click save and it will give you a little dialog box that tells you that the settings you save um, choose to save will override the settings in the save as so okay we get it um, choose under Adobe PDF presets choose high quality print that will make sure that it doesn't get compressed down and all pixely and also uncheck preserve Photoshop editing options optimizing is fine to leave and that's pretty much all you'll need for this and then say save PDF now I'm going to go open my PDF um, if I can remember where I saved it where did I save it I'm coming back to Photoshop if you ever do this and forget where you save something you can go file um, or actually even just save as again and it will show me where it was okay so it's on my desktop it just was taking a second to show up so here's my file it's a PDF and if I double click on it on my computer it will open up in Adobe Acrobat Reader um, and that's actually a free download for most people and works on Max at least, I don't have much PC knowledge, but I would suspect that there's one for the PC as well. And this is what your printer will get, and you always, always, always want to open your PDF, make sure that it looks the way you expect it to look. If it doesn't, go back to Photoshop and do some tweaking. And uh, that's what you need to do to create a event poster.